Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today we've got the JJRC Heaven or the X9. So I don't know if you've seen much about this. It's also made by a company called Seafly and it was a Seafly Dream. Now the big difference is when the Seafly Dream came out, well actually like it came out a bit ago but there's very few places to sell it. It was $300 or £245. This is exactly the same model but this one's £133. And I think it's well worth the money. So let's just have a look what you get in the box. I have had this out of the box previously. So, so in here, in the package you get the drone, the clip for the controller, the controller, a battery, a battery charger, which is nice to see, a mains battery charger that plugs in well the only thing you need to do is buy an adapter because mine came with a two pin plug but this thing is a proper charger the battery clips into it like this and it does actually charge your battery properly no USB charges in about an hour and 20 minutes from flat so it's fantastic and it also comes with this quick start guide um, which I haven't got in much detail to, not at all really to be fair but it does get you flying but I'll show you on the app that this is already included in the app. So, this is the drone. Let me just pop the battery into it. So, as you can see, it's a Spark clone. <laughs> it's almost identical. Even the battery shape's the same. With one big difference from the other toy grey drones, this actually has a two-axis gimbal that works. So there you go, it's got a gimbal. It's only two axis, not three. Like the Spark, it's a two axis gimbal. The SD card goes in the back, just like the Spark, and it's also got a USB port in the back. So the battery is 11.4 volt, 1000 milliamp. Good for about 10 minutes. So, it, a lot, very Sparkish time as well, but this is a high volt battery. So as you can see, it's almost identical. It comes in black or white. I chose the black one. Uh, the white one looks exactly like the back. And it's got, as I said, the Seafly is really the only difference is the writing on here. And the controller is different on the Seafly. But as you can see, it's extremely nicely finished off. And it's got an optical flow sensor. So it has optical flow, a two axis gimbal. And it's full GPS. Dual. So it's got GLONASS and GPS. Very, very nice finished off piece of kit. Let me just show you the controller. So the, if you've watched my video for the X7, this controller is identical apart from this has got gold accents on the button. I'll go through the controller with you anyway. So it has antennas here. And I do believe, because um, someone told me on my last video, Simon, thank you very much, that one of these is real and one's fake. So... Or maybe they're both real, I don't know. But anyway, they appear to be. You can change the stick mode from 1 to 2. So again, turn it on. Stick down, hold the camera button in. We'll put it into mode 1. Stick down, hold the takeoff and land button. Turn it on, put it back into mode 2. Only if you set it once. Once you set it, it's always set. It's rechargeable from a micro USB slot on the top. So you don't need to worry about changing the batteries. And it's exactly the same controller. I like the feel of this. It feels, in your hand it feels very light and possibly a bit cheap. But the resolution is great on the sticks. So I like these controllers. Like I say, they look a bit cheap, but they do the job. And this, some of this size isn't going to come with a big full size controller. So it seems to be what people are going to now. And I much prefer these than the ones you get with the pull-out thing on the bottom. To put your phone in, you get this here, simply clips into the back here. It would do if I could do it. Push it down and your phone clips in there. And to release it you press that button. So let's just power it up. Switch on the back, press it once and then hold it. <laughs> And then your controller 
hold your button in and there you go you're bound so you can see the two axis gimbal working here very smooth actually and obviously on the controller you have a wheel to control the gimbal actually, I haven't bound it. So it's, it's really smooth as well for the operation on the wheel. It's very smooth. It's not too fast, it's not crazy, and it is controllable ish. So it looks really nice. Obviously, it's got brushless motors, similar size to what they are on the Spark. So let's just connect it up to the app so I can show you the app and I'll run through some more features in the control. So the app it runs on is the Enjoy Fly app, which is the same app as the S7, with, and there's, but with a couple of differences. So let's just connect it to the app. Let's just find the... So if you can see on my phone, I hope this glare is not too much. Let me see if I can get that in so there's no glare. Can you see where it says Drone and Controller? I'm sorry if it's not fully sharp. I'm struggling with the sun coming in today. Well, not the sun, but the brightness outside. You have to click the dr the controller. The drone is when you want to fly it with your phone. The controller is when you want to fly it with the controller. So we're going to... So connected that. Internet unavailable, I should hope so. And then we're going to go into the Enjoy Fly app. We're going to hit Start Flying. And there you go. It said it had got an SD card in. But as you can see, look, next to no lag. I hope you can see that. Let's get rid of that off the screen. I know I've got no SD card. So, brilliant. So as you can see on the top of the screen, I've got, it says position. And it says safe flight. In other words, it's got no GPS. So if I click the M button on the controller... It's going to put that into attitude, altitude hold. So now it's got altitude hold mode so you can fly it if you're in a no GPS area. Or if you want to fly it indoors. Because remember, this has got a sensor underneath. So it's got an optical flow. And once again, and you're back in position. The app's quite straightforward. So on the bottom you've got your distance, your height, your, your, vert, your speeds, vertical speed, horizontal speed. I'm not sure what that LP is actually. Up here you've got the how many satellites you've got and the battery of the drone itself. Here you've got your camera controls. And then if I click on where it says position up here, I've got track and orbit, so I've got different modes. Obviously that won't work unless I've got GPS. But as you can see, the picture is, re is really, really clear. Far better than it is on the X7. So the X7 picture, there is lag on, there's lag on it, but also it's nowhere near as sharp on my phone as this is. So, this hasn't had a flight yet, I haven't flown it. What I have done is hover it, hovered it outside and the gimbal works. The picture was stable, it was getting blown out a little bit in the wind but the gimbal was holding. So, we stand a good chance here of having maybe a winner. Now the camera is 1080p, at 30 frames a second, but I'd imagine the cost will have been cut because they'll do a, this thing might not have a great bit rate. This isn't going to have the picture quality of a Spark, don't get me wrong, but if it can produce decent quality video that's stable for 133 quid, surely that's a winner in my book. And don't get me wrong, this thing looks amazing. It looks just like a Spark. And the other great thing is this weighs under 250. I think it comes in about 235, something like that. Um, in fact, let me get my scales and I'll weigh it. Should be proved wrong. Just turn the scales on. Well, it's actually a lot less. 150 grams it's coming in. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. 151.2. I don't know if you can just make that out on the edge. So, it's well under. But you did get... But what I would say is... This isn't going to fly in anything like a strong wind because it's not that it's not that strong the wind outside and it was getting blown around a little bit. I, it was not pulling flying. It don't get me wrong, but your spark would have definitely handled the wind a lot better than that. But 
I'm not comparing this to Spark, and that's not what it's about. This is about the drone itself. And I think for the money, unless it's disastrous when I fly it, this is going to be a decent drone. Everybody's been wanting to try and get a 1080p drone that's cheap, with decent footage, with a gimbal. And this is right in the ballpark, cost-wise in my opinion. It's well under the price of a Spark, even a second-hand one. And it's not much more than I paid the other day for, my, for the X7 and also the F11 and stuff like that. They're all in the same kind of ballpark cost-wise. So let's see what it's like on the flight when I do it in a couple of days. So thanks ever so much for watching. Uh, have a fantastic day. And I'll see you all soon.